The story of Christmas is a story of love. It was light and angels that gave guidance to those blessed to be a part of those transcendent events. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. One of the most beautiful symbols of the birth of Jesus Christ into this world is light. The appearance of the long-promised Messiah brought light to a darkened world. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Joseph brought the baby Jesus to the temple, Simon knew through the power of the Holy Ghost that this was indeed the Christ, the Son of the Most High. Let this be a time of remembrance, of gratitude, and a time of forgiveness. Let it be a time to ponder the atonement of Jesus Christ and its meaning for each of us personally. We, like the wise men of old, should seek the Christ and lay before him the most precious of gifts, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. wondrous gift is given, so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in the world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. The Savior gave freely to all, 
and his gifts were of value beyond measure. Throughout his ministry, he blessed the sick, restored sight to the blind, made the deaf to hear, and the halt and the lame to walk. He gave cleanliness to the unclean. He restored breath to the lifeless. He gave hope to the despairing. He bestowed light in the darkness. Because he came, we know how to reach out to those in trouble or distress, wherever they may be. Because he came and paid for our sins, we have the opportunity to gain eternal life. The spirit of Christmas is the spirit of love and of generosity and of goodness. May his precious spirit be with us and may he ever be the center of our celebrations. With the pure love of Christ, let us walk in his footsteps as we approach the season celebrating his birth. As we do so, let us remember that he still lives and continues to be the light of the world. Welcome this evening to our special celebration of the birth of Jesus. I want to talk to you and share with you a little bit tonight about some information uh, about possibly where Jesus was born and maybe something you've never heard before. Uh, back in, in, in Bible times, they didn't really celebrate birthdays. They celebrated now where, what your lineage was like, or where you came from, Jesus of Nazareth, but they didn't really celebrate birthdays. And so there was not a lot of records kept of when somebody was born or where, where they were necessarily born. And, and so we find that, that that is true with, with Jesus. Sometimes we, we don't know exactly when he was born. Some think it was in the fall and different times of the year than what we celebrate in December 25th. But we picked a day and said, let's celebrate it here. <laughs> because we as Americans, we celebrate birthdays. <laughs> and, and so we want to honor Jesus as well uh, and celebrate his birthday. So we've gathered here uh, tonight and, and tomorrow. We're just going to have a special time and Sunday of, of celebrating his birth. Um, but in, in Micah, Chapter 5, I want to talk to you tonight about the Tower uh, of the Flock. Now, that's a weird label, but let me explain it to you, and, and how this possibly could be the place where Jesus was born. Um, you know, the Bible tells us th that word in, uh, when we think of the word in, we think of a motel. That may not have been what was referred to when they talked about Jesus' birth, um, that word in could be guest room. Um, we'll find that it was, it, it was used later in Scripture uh, as a house or a guest room. Uh, and that was the connotation or the reference in which it was used. And Bible interpreters interpreted it as a motel. What we would think of as a motel today. You go to another community, and you stay there overnight, you get a motel. Well, in Bible times, and in the Middle East, People are very hospitable. I mean, if, if, if you are, are coming and you become a guest, they treat you like royalty. And they probably do a lot better than many times we as Americans do, you know, at, at treating guests and, have, and being a hospitable. Um, and, and so when, when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, both Mary and Joseph were of the lineage of David. Bethlehem was known as the city of David. That's where David, King David, was born. That's also where King David, when he was uh, king over uh, Israel, operated out of Jerusalem, and Bethlehem is like five miles from Jerusalem. And so they, they used uh, Bethlehem was very accessible, uh, and a lot of things that were done in Bethlehem were for the temple in Jerusalem and in, in the sacrifices uh, that they, they did. And, and so in Micah chapter 5, it, this is a, a prophecy of Jesus coming, and the Jewish people understood prophecy, and they understood this very well, and, and so they were anticipating, looking, that they knew that their, their king was going to come out of Bethlehem, because the scriptures told them that, and here's one that says, but you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, 
whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. And so they knew that their king, their Messiah, was going to come from Bethlehem. And so they all, you know, they're all looking towards Bethlehem and, and looking for that special time, kind of like we today, you know, we're looking for the rapture, you know, and that special time where we're going to rise with Jesus, you know, and, and uh, so they in, in here, they were looking for their Messiah. He's going to come, he's going to come, and he'll, he'll come out of Bethlehem. And, and so what they had in, in uh, Bethlehem was because it was so close to Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem where they had the temple, they were sacrificing all the time. And so they had, they had different sheepfolds around Bethlehem and around Jerusalem. They had to be within five miles of uh, the, the temple. And they called it the Tower of the Flock. Now, the Tower of the Flock, it was a, it was a tower and where you could go up into the tower and they would have uh, priests there watching, making sure no wild animals were coming or no enemies were coming, and then they had fields uh, where sheep were grazing. And so there's thousands of sheep at the Tower of the Flock. And then in the bottom of this tower, it was a birthing center where they would bring the ewes in and when they're about ready to lamb, and, and, and this, whole, this whole place was overseen by uh, shepherd priests. These were priests that were trained uh, in her sheep herding, and they were trained in the Scripture, knowing that, that the Messiah is coming out of Bethlehem. They were, they were trained uh, in how to take care of a ceremonial lamb. A ceremonial lamb that was going to be used for sacrifice had to be perfect. There could be no flaw in it. Could never have had a broken bone. Um, it had to be a perfect specimen of a lamb. And so when, when a lamb was born, they would... They, the shepherd priests would help the ewe, and they'd bring the lamb, and they would wrap it in swaddling linen, and they would lay it in a manger. Now, a manger was a feed trough, but this was a very ceremonial place, very clean place, and they treated these lambs so cautiously and tenderly, and, and they put it into the, the manger or the trough for a period of time in, a, in swaddling linen. They wanted to keep the legs protected because they didn't want it to try to jump up and run around and, and break a leg or, or get injured in any way. If it got injured, it no longer could be a ceremonial lamb. And so they would protect it that way and put it in swaddling clo uh, linen uh, for a period of time to, and let, let the lamb kind of get used to this new environment. <laughs> this, this is different. <laughs> different than the womb I come from, you know. And so they were giving them time to adjust to it in a safe place. And, and then after the a period of time, and I don't know what the length of time it was, uh, then they would allow the lamb to come out and, and, and continue to take care of the lamb and prepare it and watch over it uh, so it could be used in the sacrifice. And, and so uh, Luke chapter 2. And this is very, you know, interesting to me as you, as you look at when Jesus was brought out and they wrapped him in swaddling clo a cloth uh, blanket. This was common back then. And many times, uh, each side of the family, the, the grooms, the husband, and the wife's side of the family, they would, they would have this, what they call a swaddling cloth. It was a blanket, and they would sew and, and, and uh, do artistic things on it that represented their family. And then when the baby was born, they would wrap it in this where both families uh, represented and both families saying that this is highly, this child is highly thought of, highly valued for us, and he's part of our family, and he's special. And so putting a baby in a swaddling cloth was common back then and as well. And, you know, we do that today. We put a baby in a blanket, you know, to protect his arms and his legs and keep it all safe, you know, and cuddly. And, and also it helps you probably the baby feel like the womb, you know, cuddled by the womb, and now it's cuddled by a blanket. And, and so in, in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter um, or Luke chapter 2, it says, That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. So there were ceremonial priest shepherds 
guarding and taking care of the flocks of sheep. And that was their job. They did it 24 hours a day. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find the babe, baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, uh, that which the Lord has told us about. Now, when the shepherd priests, the angels came to them, they were just outside of Bethlehem. They said that this, this particular uh, tower of the flock, uh, in Scripture, it is identified as the place where Jesus was going to be born, and, and it's called uh, Midgal Eder. And, and so these shepherd priests were working in this Midgal Eder, uh, Tower of the Flock location. And it's about 2,000 steps from the actual city of Bethlehem. And so when they said, let us go and, and, and see this, um, it's possible that Jesus could have been born in this uh, ceremonial place where lambs were birthed for the sacrifice, and that he could have been. Many scholars believe that this is where Jesus was born. Now, we don't know for sure, uh, but it's an interesting idea. And whether he was born there or not, it's interesting how they, they treated the ceremonial lambs and how they took care of them uh, and prepared them for the sacrifice uh, that represented taking away the sin of the world. And, and, and it says here, when the, uh, they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' were, story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God, for all they had heard and seen, it was just as the angel had told them. And so the shepherds were not far from where Jesus was born. And they were very close. They, they walked there, and then they departed from there, uh, all in a, a short period of time. Now, the, the wise men, what we call the wise men, it was a couple years down the road that they came to Jesus and to honor him, bringing gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh, uh, frankincense and myrrh, and uh, that... Then Mary and Joseph had to flee into Egypt because there was a decree to kill every baby under the age of two. And uh, so the, the, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which are gifts brought to royalty, uh, is probably what Mary and Joseph lived on and survived as they were journeying into Egypt. And so, you know, the birth of Jesus is really spread out compared to what we do today. Everything's done in a short period of time. You know, you think, oh, this all happened in a few hours. <laughs> but it didn't. It was, it was extended out. And, you know, and when Mary and Joseph came to Bethlehem, that was like a 90-mile trek. And being pregnant and such, I mean, it, it, it was not an easy journey. Uh, and and it, it's real possible that they had relatives in Bethlehem as well, and that their relatives' guest rooms were all full. Now, it's possible that maybe Jesus was born in one of those uh, houses uh, because the house back then, it was, very, it was a very simple house. It wasn't elaborate. didn't have bathrooms and such like we have today. Uh, but the lower level was where the animals were, and then the, the next level is where the living quarters were, and they, almost every house had a guest room. It wasn't very big, but it was a guest room where when guests came, they could, they could sleep. And then they had flat roofs, and that was kind of a patio where they did a lot of cooking, a lot of things on the uh, upper level. And, and, but at night, they would bring their animals in, because back then, if, if you wanted eggs, you had to have your own chickens, <laughs> because you couldn't go to hy V and buy your eggs. And so you kind of had to learn to be self-sustaining, 
and, and it was a real agricultural society. And so they would build their houses for the lower part was for the animals. Then they would bring the animals in at night and, you know, and put, uh, fence them in or barricade them to keep them, keep them safe from the wild animals. And, and so that was what houses were like. And, you know, it's real possible that Jesus was born uh, at the Tower of the Flock. Uh, what we have found is that in, in, in Bible times, they didn't keep real accurate records, and that we, uh, translators and such, through the years, have kind of adjusted and kind of updated the story to fit into our way of thinking and our, our understanding. And that's fine. You know, it, it, we're celebrating Jesus' birthday anyway, uh, even though we may not be 100% accurate, uh, but it's still a special time. And, and this could be as well. Uh, a part of, of Jesus' birth where he was at the, the Tower of the Flock. And, and there's a lot of representation there that we see even today. Now, uh, remember John the Baptist, and he said, you know, uh, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, the Lamb. Jesus, many places, referred to the, a Lamb, the sacrificial Lamb. And he came as a sacrificial Lamb. Uh, to die for our sins, that his blood would be shed, uh, that our sins would be uh, removed from us. And, and in First Peter, um, it says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. It was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Jesus Christ the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world was brought and sacrificed for our sake. And we celebrate that today. We celebrate his coming. If you're here today and you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, you, you've, you've never uh, received the gift of God through Jesus, I encourage you to do that tonight. It would be a great gift to give him is your life. The greatest gift that we can give to, to, the, to Jesus is our life. And, and so I encourage you to do that tonight. And, uh, and as John the Baptist proclaimed, behold the Lamb of God. We're celebrating that and making that declaration tonight. If you have uh, candles with you and you want to go into a special time of uh, meditation and, work and uh, worship, and let the Spirit of the Lord speak to your heart tonight. And as we celebrate Jesus' birth, God continually pours into our lives as well to us. switch on the back, on the bottom, if you just flip the switch. Jesus, we come before you today and we celebrate your birth. Coming into the world and as a sacrificial lamb for us. That your blood was shed. That we would have the remission of sin. And we celebrate that tonight and we honor you, Jesus. Bless you. Let's stand together and, and, uh, as we worship uh, together.
a world that is torn all apart. How many fathers gave up their sons for me?
Bible says that Jesus came as a light into the world, to a dark world. And now he lives within us, and we also now, this candle represents we are lights. But the love of God flows through us into the world as well. So God bless you as you continue to celebrate in your home and with your families uh, the coming of the light of the world, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin. Sunday morning, we're going to talk about Joseph, the earthly uh, father of Jesus, man of courage. We'll talk about how special he was, and uh, we'll also have a special debt relief offering. We're going to have a wonderful time Sunday morning. God bless you, and have a great evening. You can lay your candles on the table as you leave.